Hi, I'm Heather, and I'm here to show you how to make this apron. You're going to need 0.8 meters of the main fabric, which is this floral. You can use whatever fabric you want. And you need 0.65 meters of the accent. If you are not doing pockets, and you'll need a meter if you are doing pockets. You will have a little bit left over that you can do potholders with or some other project. The pattern for this is free. I will try and attach it um, in the comments section. Um, if that doesn't work, give me a comment saying that you're wanting it and I'll email it to you. You can copy it, you can give it away, whatever you want to do. Just uh, please say that it's Heather made this pattern on it. Thank you very much. And let's go! These are the fabrics that we're going to use for our apron. This will be our main fabric, and then this will be our accent fabric. So I'm just going to start off by cutting our main color. And this one is actually being cut straight. And because this is a bigger piece, we're actually going to use the cutting mat as our measuring apparatus. Um, normally you don't. If you're using smaller, cutting smaller pieces, you want to just use your ruler. But for bigger pieces, you can use your mat. And I'll just show you how to do that. We need 18 inches. So I've got this set at the zero. And you want to make sure that your folded edge goes along your line. And then we line up our 18 here, as well as our 18 up here. And I'm left-handed, so this may look odd for you. However, I've got the camera going that direction, so hopefully it won't look too strange. And then to do just a quick lesson on cutting, you want to take your little finger and put it on the outside edge of your ruler. You want to arch your fingers, putting it flat, puts too much strain on your wrist and your shoulder. If you arch your fingers, then that's good. Now, if you don't have the strength in your fingers or you have arthritis or something, then go ahead and use some other form. But this anchoring your little finger there will help keep that ruler from getting way on you. So you're gonna start. And I obviously have a dull blade. So we'll fix that before the next cut. But then you just move your fingers up and do another rest of the cut. Now I'm going to have to go over that again. And there you have it. There we have our 18 inch piece, which is the primary piece for the apron itself. I'm just going to fold that and put it aside for now. And then we're also going to cut the the amount that we're needing for the bib. So 11 inches is what we're needing for the bib. I'm going to change rotary cutters. However, this one's set for right-handed. You always want your blade to be next to your ruler. And because this one is set wrong, I'm just going to undo it. Make sure you keep track of all your pieces and the way they came off. You flip it around and you can see how much, oops, how much lint and dust has formed in there. And all those will slow down your rotary cutter. It will muck up your blade. So we're going to put it on this side because I'm left-handed. And then we put this back on. There's a little flat spot that goes right on there and then this you want to put it so that indent is going down. Now we'll put enough tension on it that it's not going to spring away from the rotary cutter. So now that I've got it set and I'm going to cut the 11 inch just like that. Okay and we'll cut our bib out a little bit later. So now we're going to cut our straps. We'll just see if we've got a straight edge on there. 
not very. I'm going to just straighten this off. So again, quick lesson here. You always want to go from your folded edge. So put your line, one of the lines, doesn't matter which one, on that folded edge. And then I'm pretty scotch, so I want to keep all the fabric I can. And then you just move up your ruler. And there we go. So now I'm left-handed, i got to switch that around. And we are going to cut the trim for the apron, which are three inch strips. So now we're not using our mat as a guide, we're using our ruler. So I'm lining that up on the three inch line, anchoring it with my pinky. And I need two three inch pieces. So one and a second one. Oop. Always one little spot that doesn't want to let go. So those are our three inch pieces. Now we need four four inch pieces. Again, I'm just going to move my fabric down so I've got a little bit more room. And the four inch pieces are for the ties and your ruffle around the bib. These bigger rulers, this one has an extra half inch on the one side, which can become a little complicated. You have to really watch that you've got the right, the correct side working for you, or else you'll get the wrong size cut. And normally I would use a six inch ruler for these so that my spread is not quite so great, but I don't know where my six inch is, so I'll just go with this one. Please be aware that you are welcome to fast forward through any parts that you're you feel confident in. Don't feel that you have to watch the whole thing start to finish. And then we need one piece that's two and a half inches. So here we have the two, one, two, and the half inch is that little piece in there. So you just want to make sure that that lines up all the way down. And then we're just going to go there. Move our fingers up. Oh man, same spot every time. Must be my spot where I quit putting extra pressure on. Now some of these we're cutting in half. Um, I'm going to take off the salvage edge first and then we'll cut them in half. And then whatever we're needing for the pocket, if you're putting a pocket on, is five inches, seven inches. So I'm just going to cut one piece extra for the pocket. There we go. <clears throat> I'm hoping to be able to figure out how to upload the pattern onto the in the comment section but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the pattern and if it doesn't work in the comments you can just pause and do a screenshot and then you can copy it that way hopefully that shows up all right and then 
This is the pattern for the bib part. Again, just take a screenshot and then copy it. And then this is the pattern for the pocket. We just have to cut out our pockets now. If you want one or two, that's an option. All right. So when you are pinning a pattern onto your fabric, you want to make sure that you always pin perpendicular to the edge, which means that your pin goes in as if it's going to hit the edge. And you're going to do that in strategic spots all the way around, making sure your pin is in. And you always want to pin from your center of your pattern out towards the edge. A couple reasons for that. One, it when you pin, it tends to shift the fabric slightly. So if you pin the other direction, then you're actually pulling more fabric into your pattern. Where if you pin away, it kind of stretches it out the way it should be and keeps it nice and flat. And then also when you put pin this way, if your pin happens to be out too far, then you can just pull it in so that you don't end up cutting it. Now I would never use really super good sewing scissors when you're using the heavy paper. If you're using tissue paper, not such a big problem. But when you're using this heavy paper, you want to make sure that you use less than quality scissors because the paper is hard on the scissors. And to the best of your ability, you want to keep that fabric flat on the table. If you pick it up, then again, it, it shifts, it rearranges itself, it doesn't end up the way you want it. So you want to try and keep that fabric and the pattern as flat on the table as possible. And you just want to curve yourself around. yourself around there we go and there we have it two pockets cut out now you have extra fabric there so you could do hot plate hot mitt things out of that if you want maybe we'll do that in another session some of these have to get cut in half so this is one of them and we're just going to take the salvage off because the salvage is a tighter weave than the rest of the fabric and it's not going to lay the same it's going to bunch up funny it's, it's just not going to work properly so you always want to take the salvage off I have never come across a situation where you want to leave that salvage on maybe if you're doing home deck or something but like cushions and then this just needs to be cut in half this way and this is our waistband which we'll get to later okay so two are going to be left whole for our bib ruffle and then the other two are going to be cut in half for our ties so again we're just going to trim this edge off now if you're a quilter, you know a quilter, who's using salvages to do, there's some really cool projects that they use salvages, you could actually cut the salvages off first before you do the rest of the whole project. And then you would have some nice big pieces of salvage. So, however, I never pre-think that out. So. And these are the two that are getting cut in half. So I'm just going to pull them out here so they lay flat. And I'm just going to cut them with scissors. So I'm just going to pull it out. And these are ties. So if they're not totally, totally perfect, 
it's okay because they're ties. Nobody is going to see it. And lots of stuff we can fix in the um, when we're sewing it. So this is our this is our ruffle, but we don't need that <coughs> salvage on there. You can see what I mean if you cut off all the salvages first, that would be a good idea. Then you wouldn't be doing this at this point. These are the trims for the skirt. So one of these, I'll cut off the salvage on both of these though. First. You're probably wondering why am I switching that slightly? because one has a bit more of the not printed side than the other and again I am extremely careful about my fabric so I want to use every little bit of it so now what we're gonna do is one of these gets cut and these are the trims for around the outside edge of the skirt uh, apron and the other one is on the bottom of the apron. So now let's take our apron piece, which is this one. We're just going to cut the salvage off that. And again, I'm just lining this up on this edge because we know this is straight. And then I'm cutting that. And there we go, this will be our main apron piece. We're going to take this, and then we will take this one here, and it is going to get sewn on the bottom edge there. And then these get sewn on the sides to frame that apron, just like that. And then the bib. So we need two of these, and they get cut on the fold. <coughs> so we're just gonna fold that up. Printed out this printed my pattern on one side and this on the other, which was a bit of a problem, but we'll go with it for now. So, again, you're going to just lay this right on the fold, and I folded it. There's actually two layers together there. I don't know if you saw what I did there or not. There's the two pieces together, and then I folded it. So now I'm cutting out two pieces at the same time. And again, we're putting our pins in perpendicular. And we'll just put it in the strategic spots, which are the corners. You don't have to go crazy with pins. Just need a few. And then one more just to finish this project up. So it won't go anywhere. And again, this is heavy paper, so you don't want to use your very best sewing scissors with it. And then you just trim around. bottom and again you're going to leave this line right on the table. You don't want to pick it up because that will warp it. Just like that. 
It's not perfectly accurate. Don't worry about it because, again, we can just fix it when we're sewing it. All right, there we have it. So now you have your front and your back of your bib. Now while we've got this folded, we're going to mark our strap placement. So we're just going to put that back on there, just like that. And we just have to find a marking pen or pencil. And this is not going to show. I try to stay away from pens, like a an actual ink pen that you would normally use because um, sometimes it will bleed when you wash it but a pencil will be fine and these will all be inside just the seams anyway so you're just going to mark the placement of the straps which is here and mark the other side down and mark the third and fourth ones and that just makes it easy then it doesn't matter which one you pull up to be the, the one that your straps are going on you've got some kind of mark for it all right there we go so we are ready to start sewing now the only other thing that we're going to be needing is a small piece of interfacing that's just going to be used in your pocket to stiffen it a bit. Now this is an iron-on interfacing. I like iron-on for certain projects, this being one of them. So I will show you how to use iron-on interfacing as well. I'm just going to do a quick check on, so that's two inches, so I don't know if you can see that or not. My uh, top here is two inches but I'm going to do a clean finish on the edge so I'm going to finish it up so I only need about one and a half inches of interfacing there we go, one and a half and because I'm lazy I am not going to turn this around and I'll use the really crappy rotary cutter And there we have it. Awesome. So now we'll go over and we'll iron this on so it's ready. And then we can just do the clean finish when we go to do all the rest of the sewing. So a quick lesson on interfacings. So I'm just going to see if you can see this here or not. So one side will be shiny or have little bumps on it. So you can see this side has kind of little white bumps. I honestly am not sure if that's showing up in there or not. Or sometimes if you kind of lean it to the light, you can see that it's shiny. That has the glue on it. So you always want to make sure that glue side is going towards the fabric. Now, because either way, otherwise it will stick to your iron, which is never a good thing. I'm just going to line these up right beside each other. And I'm going to put the glue side down and I'm, I can feel that it's got some bumps on it so I know that's the glue side. I'm just going to put my pattern here because what I want is I want this to be right at the fold edge. That's there. And that's there. And then I'm just going to trim off the extra. Because again, you don't want it going on your ironing pad either. And then you want to set your iron to whatever your fabric is that you're using. In this case, it's cotton. Check again to make sure you got the bumpy side down or the glue side down. And then you just lay it down. It's about five seconds for it to adhere properly. And then I just like to do a little wiggle back and forth. Not a lot. 
If you drag it too much, then it will actually stretch it out of shape and do funky things with it. So you just want to make sure that it's sticking down. And now all we have to do is trim in between there and we've got it ready to go. All right, we are ready to start sewing. First thing we have to do though is wind a bobbin. Now you can see this bobbin still has a little bit left on it, but we do not want to wind new thread on another bobbin that has thread because you will just run into trouble in the end. So it's always best to start out with a brand new clean bobbin. And we're going to use most of a bobbin anyway, so it just makes more sense to wind a brand new bobbin. And we'll fill it up. So we're going to put it through our little catch here. Um, sewing machines all look a little bit different, but generally the rules are the same. So there will be some kind of catch that it goes in, and then it goes over to some kind of attention thing and you always want to cross your thread on your tension assembly there and then it goes between the bobbin uh, where's the hole on this side between the layers of the bobbin and then up through that hole so can you see there and then we put it on our little bobbin winder pin push it across and yours might be slightly different Mine will automatically disengage the needle when I push this across. Some you have to undo a knob, some you have to flip a lever. Whatever you need to do, that's what you need to do next. And it's always helpful if your foot pedal is handy and ready to go, which mine was not. And then you're just going to hold this thread while you start and just put your foot down. You can go as fast as you want on this because it's just automatically going to do what it needs to do. Now if you're finding that it's balling up or piling up too much in one spot and not enough in the other, I just take my finger and then I just make it stay up near the top for a little bit or near the bottom, whichever happens to be the problem area. And the machine should stop winding on its own. So you can see here that it's actually hardly winding anymore. So at this point, I'm going to cut my thread. It's always awkward if you have to share your sewing space with other things like the family for eating or whatever. Um, so the little extra bit that you have, you want to snip that off. You don't want to leave it because it will get caught up in your bobbin case. Now we're going to open our bobbin case. Yours may open different. You might have one that goes in the side, front, whichever. At some point we'll do a little lesson on that. Anyway yours goes, ours is this one is a drop in place so we just drop it in and then there's a little groove that it goes in there and then across over to the side. And then we just leave it hanging and when you close this door there's actually a little bit of extra space there so this thread doesn't get hung up. If you pull it over too far though to there then it won't be able to come up when you pull your needle around. Okay. Now we're going to un oops, thread this, threaded it the wrong way, snap it in again, and now we're not going through here, this is only for winding the bobbin. It comes down, yours might go down the other side. This is where my tension disc is though, so I want to make sure that it actually gets into that tension disc. So you might have to wait and make sure it snaps in there. I'm going to rotate my hand wheel. So that my take-up lever, which is this piece here, will be the one that goes up and down, you'll see it on your machine. It has to go up through that take-up lever, and then down. And again, all machines are pretty close to the same. You will go through a tension disc, you will go up to the take-up lever, and you will go through a couple of curly cues or some other kind of catchy things. 
to keep your thread in place and then it goes through the eye of the needle. Now 90% of the machines that are out there that people are using the thread goes through from the front to the back. The very very old machines and we're talking before 1920 maybe even before 1915 um, they might go through the side but 90% of them go through the front so make sure that you have your needle in correctly and the needle should have a groove in the front if your groove is not in the front the needle is in wrong you're going to pull up your thread and all you do is you rotate your hand wheel and the bobbin thread should pop up now if it doesn't pop up the first time rotate it a second or third time just to make sure sometimes there's just a little bit of a glitch and it needs to work itself around a couple times but generally speaking it should just pop right up All right. so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew that very long piece onto the bottom this one, what have we got? no, that's the side piece and that's the side piece and this is a very long one so you always want to sew right sides together so you put the right side, hopefully this is showing up here, the right side of our fabric and the right side of the fabric, those two are going together. And then I'm just doing a half inch seam because it's convenient. Normal dress sewing you do 5 8 inch seams uh, for quilting you do quarter inch seams. I like a little bit more but not a lot more so that's why I'm just doing half inch. But you can do quarter inch if that's what you feel best with. You can do this on a serger if you want. Another day I'll show how to use a serger. And you don't have to back stitch on this particular piece because we're going to cross it with another piece going down. So it's not too terribly major. What you want to do is you kind of want the machine to feed it through itself. And then you just pause every so often and make sure that your edges are lined up. And once you've got that going, and then I tend to put my hand at the back just to help guide it. So I'm not pulling, I'm just using it to help shift it sideways, one way or the other, if it needs to go. And then it also keeps it from bunching up somewhere on the back. So we've come to the end and you can see that there's a difference in the size here and part of this is because it's different brands of fabric so their finished fabric size is different and when we cut off our edges I may have cut off more on this one probably because it had more of that white than this flowered one had. So all I'm going to do, it's an apron, it doesn't have to be accurate, not like a quilt though you have to be a bit more accurate on on piecing this is not a big deal so we're just going to take it back and we'll just trim off this little piece here and then we'll just be fine I'll do that in a little bit in the meantime we'll do the other edge um, most machines have a cutter somewhere either on the back of the foot here or up on the side so once you know where that is that's a handy thing to use just to clip your thread you always want to leave a tail when you're finishing a project and then now I'm going to sew the other piece on this side so that's one of these guys here and these I'll probably have to trim as well because again we're just doing rough 
sizing. So you can see here, I, I am going to end up having to trim, but I'm going to sew it on first and then we'll trim it. I'm going to start now. This time I am going to back stitch. So there's a couple things you're going to do. You're always, 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 and I didn't mention it earlier, you always want to hold your threads when you start your first two stitches because it wants to suck that thread back yet up and make a big bird's nest in underneath there. So if you hold those threads, that will never happen. Plus, if for some reason it gets hung up here, you have something to give yourself a little tug to help get it going. So we're just going to hang on to the threads. We're going to take three or four stitches forward. We are going to hit our reverse button, and yours might be a knob on the side there or whatever. Mine reverses and then it starts up again. So. Now I'm lining this up and I want this seam to go down. And I'm not pressing until I'm finished because that's the way I roll. But I, because I want that seam to go down, I am going to position it so it goes down at this point. And then we're just going to line our fabrics up again. Sometimes I hold it with my left hand here, and then I'll hold it on the back side just to help guide it. Now I purposely sewed from the bottom up, and that was because I wanted this extra up at the top. I want the bottom edge to be a nice, complete finish on this edge. So that's why I did that. And when I come back, I'm, I'm going to actually go trim this. I'll trim this one so it's the right size, and then I will sew it on as well from bottom to top. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to clean finish your edges. I now have both sides sewn on, ready to go. You can see this one as well. And we're going to clean finish the edge now. So here's a quick lesson on clean finishing. So basically what a clean finish is, is you're going to turn it and then turn it. And we're going to stitch it down. Now if you feel that you need to press it and pin it, you are welcome to do that. And if you were going to pin it, you would pin it perpendicular again, which is sideways. And then go down a bit further and pin it again. Perpendicular. And then just stretch in between. Or you can do this and then go and, and press it if you want. But I'm kind of into speed. So I feel if you can be fast and accurate at the same time, then that's the way to go. So I'm going to put my needle down into my fabric, just so it's holding. I'm going to put my foot down. If you don't put your foot down, you'll end up with loops underneath. So if any time you've got loops happening underneath, just check to make sure that your foot's down first. Again, you're going to hold your tails at the beginning and start stitching. Now you want to stop and take that pin out before you hit it because lots of times needles just seem to gravitate to pins. I don't know why. But. And then I'm again I'm just putting a little pressure on the back. I'm actually doing about the same amount of pressure on the front keeping it from going too fast through there. And I'm just holding this with my finger where I want to stop the next time. And I've got that set just right. I didn't talk about color of thread to use. I chose red because I knew I had top stitching to do on it. If you don't have top stitching, you could go with a beige. You could do with a light gray if you've got mostly gray, blue colors happening in it. I usually try and do with some, some kind of a neutral. But because I had top stitching happening, I knew I was going to use the red. So that's what I'm doing all my stitching with. Now you're probably wondering 
what we're going to do at the corner. And I'm just going to go a little bit further and then I will show you. That's an extra thread here I'm going to get rid of before I go too much further. So, there's a couple ways to do the corners. You can fold that that way and then fold this this way up. So you've got that kind of a finish. The way I like to finish it is I like to flip my corner up and flip it a second time. So it's about the same size as my normal, what I've been doing on the side. And then pull that down like that and I'm just going to put a little pin right there. Now can you see what's happening? This is on the angle. This is coming down and now we've got a 45 degree angle happening here. So when we fold this side up, that 45 degree angle should meet up. Now I've got a little bit of a problem happening there, so we're going to have to go a little bit further there. And you just play with it until you get it to do what you want it to. And sometimes you just use your pin to help do what you need it to do. Move your fabric around a bit. Okay, now the other thing is I want that seam to go out. So I'm going to make that happen right at this point as well. There we go. That looks better. stop with your needle in the fabric so I've got it so it's gone into the second piece here I'm going to lift my foot and turn it pull out that needle because that's just going to be a problem set my foot back down and then I like to give it a little push as it's going through because there's quite a bit of fabric right at that point and it wants to get hung up so you can see you've got a nice neat corner fabric fell on the floor so there we go again we're just going to turn it you want to try and stay as close to this edge as possible without falling off it which sometimes is a challenge. If if you're finding that you're having a really hard time with it, do a decorative stitch. So a multi-stitch zigzag or some other decorative fancy stitch and then it's not going to matter if you're off the edge or not. It will still catch it and it will look like you planned it that way. As you can see, I have a quilting foot on there right now, so that would not be a good idea because I would break my plastic foot. I'll try and remember, this is an apron. A little imperfection is not even going to show up on it. Most people do not go and check the hems and go, oh my goodness. Right here is an eighth of an inch longer than that. Right there. We're not going to do that. And the other thing, once it's washed a couple times, again, you're not going to see any little bits here or there. So again, I want the seam to go out, so I'm going to make sure it folds that direction. Go over it. I like to stop with my needle in the fabric so that it's not going to go anywhere while I'm playing around with other things that need to happen. I'm going to trim off all these extra threads. It's kind of key if you 
trim all your threads as you go. You don't have to go back later and check to make sure you've got them all. Sometimes if you don't trim them as you go, you're looking and go, oh my goodness, there's a hangy thread. So again, we're going to do a corner. I just find the second one goes better than the first. I'm not quite sure why. You can see I've got the nice little angle happening there. Hopefully you can see my fingers out of the way. And I think I'm just going to put a pin in there so that it doesn't shift on me while I'm sewing. to lift my foot, turn my fabric, put my foot down, and then I'm going to take that pin out because I didn't want it to shift while I'm taking that pin out. Again, I'm not back stitching because I have another seam that's going to cross that anyway, so it's not a huge deal. There's not a lot of stress or anything on that. Now I want to stitch this down so that it lays nice and flat. I don't want them to curl up. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to stitch at a quarter inch. So my foot is a quarter inch and that's where I'm just going to put it along the edge there. Again, hang on to your tails. If you feel more comfortable pressing, then go press, but you can just pull that out as you're sewing. So again, you leave your needle in. Lift your foot, rotate your fabric, put it back down, you're good to go again. It's done. And I've got a little bit extra there. I'm just going to take this off now. And there you have it. Nice clean finished apron with lovely points. Fabulous. All right, we are ready to do our ties. Now we end up with four ties that need to be done two for the waistband and then two for our bib apron. So I'm going to show you the way I do most of my ties. There are lots of gizmos out there to turn ties inside out or tubes or whatever, but usually by the time I try and find the gizmos, I could have had them done already. So what I do is I take wool and I tie a good size knot in it. And then I take my fabric and I put that right into the seam that I'm going to sew. So we're going to fold this in half lengthwise, right sides together again. You can see I've got that piece of wool with the knot sticking out here. And I'm going to do half inch seam again. This time I am going to back stitch. So I'm going to hold my threads, take a few stitches, and I'm actually going to go over that piece of ribbon or uh, wool. I'm going to back stitch and then forward stitch. Now, 
some of you might see there's little marks on the plate here and those are the 5 8 inch seam marks so if I wanted to turn it at exactly 5 8 of an inch then I would have my fabric stop right at those marks and then when I lifted my foot and turned it it would be right at the 5 8 now because I'm doing half inch I need to go a little bit further oh, obviously I went too far I'm going to back up just a snitch that's closer and then making sure you don't run over that thread you want to make sure it's right in the middle you're going to go down that edge I'm going to back stitch here just because there's a lot of stress on it as we're playing with it and it tends to want to come undone so we're just going to up just a couple back stitches on that one and then I could go on and do the next one but I'll stop and turn this and show you how now the other thing that you need to do is you need to trim this corner because otherwise you won't have a nice corner when you're all done so what I like to do when I'm trimming corners is I take my thumbnail and I put it so it's over that stitching which means that I cannot cut those stitches unless I cut my thumbnail and then you're just going to cut that corner off just like that and you're going to have just a little bit of extra fabric left over not very much though this one isn't going to matter this edge because it's going to be kind of a straight flat edge anyway so now with my string I'm just going to kind of ball it up and I'm just going to help it over that very beginning so you can see there how it's coming off right like that and then you can bunch some more up and then you just start pulling and it's like those uh, water worms that we used to have those little wriggly ones that you couldn't hold on to because they would just keep going inside out on you anyway that's what this one will do and ta-da you have one completely finished and then you can take some pins or something else a knitting needle if you want to just kind of pull those corners out for you now I use red thread because red uh, string because I'm I've got a red project so when I cut this off even if there is a tiny little bit showing it's not going to show because it's red if I would use black or something then that would have been a problem but you use kind of a neutral color when you turn it it will just look fine and then you just take your pin and just pull your corner out nice and neat there you go nice finished apron corner and then we can press those to make them all nice and flat I sometimes just finger press though I wait until the very end and do all my pressing I'm not a fan of pressing so I find it kind of warps your fabric and pulls it out of shape sometimes so alright we're going to do the other three and then we'll go on to the next step alright so that's our four ties done now if you used a lighter color string or wool and it's showing just take a jiffy marker the same color as your fabric and just do a little jiffy marker on it and it will just disappear and jiffy markers are permanent so it shouldn't be a problem it's not going to wash out or anything in the wash and you know, nobody's going to look at the very ends of your ties and go, Oh my goodness, look, there's something there. That is not going to happen. We are going to move on to the pockets and get them ready to go. We are going to clean finish our top edge. So if you remember when we clean finish the edge of our apron, basically it's a turn turn. If you have your needle down in your machine and you need to lift it and you don't want to lose thread out of your needle you're going to hold on to your tail when you lift it and then it won't pull it down in and out 
I just always make it a habit whenever I'm doing anything to hold that thread and then it's not ever going to make me unhappy. So we've got it down a little ways. We're just turning and turning. And then as close to that edge without falling off it as you possibly can. Again, if you're having problems with falling off, use a zigzag or a decorative stitch. Now I'm going to do what's called chain sewing. And if you do one of my quilting videos, you'll get lots of that. I'll say chain sew this together. Basically, you don't cut your thread in between times and then you never have to worry about your needle coming unthreaded, balling up underneath. You just butt those up next to each other and then the next stitch is just going to go right on after the last one. Saves on thread. Thread is not cheap. You always want to use good quality thread. Those three for a dollar thread, they have about a three year lifespan and then they just deteriorate and whatever project you were working on will just fall apart. And, which is fine if it's for small children's clothes and they're going to grow out of them and you're not passing them down. But if it's something that you want to pass on to somebody else, heirloom project, an actual quilt, you want to do quality thread. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually fold these down right at the edge of our interfacing. And I'm going to sew it a half inch again. And I'm going to back stitch on this one, both at the top here and at the bottom. So I just want to make sure they're not going to go anywhere. Especially this one because we're turning on this one and so there will be a little bit of extra pressure etc that happens there. So I'm just going to chain sew these again because I hate having to worry about my, what my threads are doing. And I'm sewing these at half inch. I think I mentioned that but in case I didn't. So here's an example. I could flip it over, but then I wouldn't know where my bottom edge is. So I'm actually going to use my plate on the other side and do the same there. So they have markings for the different distance from the needle. As long as your needle set in the middle, it's not going to be a problem. Okay, now we're going to flip these inside out and we don't have to trim these corners because again they're going to be on a flat edge so when we flip them they'll just go right into a flat corner so you can see that. I think I'm needing more light here. We're just going to flip it like that and there you have your top edge of your pocket. If you want to do some decorative stitching on there or put some rickrack on, any of those things would be more than appropriate to go on there at this moment in time. I'm going to do the other one. Get these pockets ready to go. We have to do something called an ease stitch. So a quick lesson on ease stitching. You set your stitch length two very very long stitches. So on most machines it would be like a four or something along that line. My machine has a little slider. I'm going to set that slider. And I'll take a stitch because this 
you have to do a couple stitches before it will set up. So because we're doing half inch seams and half inch on everything, we're going to go at 3 eighths of an inch here and we're going to leave some fairly long tails. We'll rotate our hand wheel down in and we're starting part way down just above where the curve starts. I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to hang on to those tails again. And you can see how big the stitches are. It's a bit of a challenge to do the curve, but basically you just kind of hold it in the center and then let it go around. Now at this point, we're just doing that one little section. I'm going to lift the foot. I'm actually going to pull out a bunch of thread, leave threads here on this side, and leave threads again right by your machine. And then we're going to do the same around the bottom of this other curve, and 3 eighths an inch. We're going to hold the tails. We're going to go around until it starts up the other side, and then we're going to stop. Pull that out, and then we're going to do the same with the other pocket. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull up one of these threads. So you take your thread and just tug it will pull up your other thread from the other side. And then we're going to tie these together. We can do just a square knot. Just like that. I'm going to do the same over on this side. And then the side that isn't tied is the side that we're just going to pull gently. And can you see what's happening? As soon as you start pulling, it just wants to curve that up. And that's what we're looking for. We want it to just do that really gentle little curve. And that's all it takes. So now we have this side looking like this. A nice smooth curve. So we'll do that with the other four corners, three corners, and then we're good to go. I'm just going to go press those so that they're nice and flat and then we will carry on. I'll press the uh, press the ties at the same time. Alright, so we have the pockets pressed and I'm just going to trim these threads because they want to come out and be annoying. I'm just going to trim them so I don't have to fight with them later. And just by doing that little bit of ease stitching and, and pulling that in a little bit, it makes those curves so much easier. In another video I'll show you how to do the square pocket. But I just think the curves look, look a little nicer. Okay, and I also pressed the ties so they're ready to go. I'm never sure, I don't have an actual spot to put these, but by the time you gather, you don't want it to be too far off of center. 
because otherwise it ends up way too far over on your project. And I could measure, but that's not my style. I'm just going to pin that there. Again, perpendicular. I'm just going to place that there. And I know some of you, this will just drive you crazy because I'm not being accurate, but you know, once it's gathered up, you just don't see a lot of stuff that you would see if it were flat. Alright, so now we're just going to stitch this on. Let's come pull my sewing machine back a little bit. We're going to set our stitches back to what they were before, the close stitches. Remember to hang on to your threads. Now we're going to back stitch here. We're going to be as close to the edge as we can without falling off. And we're going to back stitch because there is a lot of stress on this point. to stitch down and around. Try and stay about the same distance from the edge. If you have to stop it all, put your needle in your fabric so that it doesn't shift it all on you. And I'm just stopping so I can readjust all my fabric so it sits flat. There's another loose thread that I missed. Tuck it in. Feel free to put more pins in. I tend to just... Bring Pin lazy, I guess. It's okay to stop. You don't have to power through it. If you have to stop ten times, you stop ten times. And then again, you're going to back stitch up here as well. threads, you want to trim them on both sides. And trim off the excess threads on the other side. Take out your pins. Now you have a nice flat line pocket. Alright, let's do the other one. Hang on to that thread. Two. 
Awesome. All right, on to the next step. We are going to get our fabrics ready to do the ruffle. So we take our ruffle fabrics, which were four inches wide. We're going to sew them together. Just like this. And this doesn't have to be half inch. This can be less. I'm doing not quite a quarter, but not quite three eighths either. And I am back stitching on this just because it will have a little bit of stress on it. Okay, when all else fails, let's go back and restitch that there. Perfect. I just want to get rid of these extra threads right now so they're not in the way. Okay, there we have it. So now, <clears throat> this one we're going to fold in half right sides out. Now it's very important that you do right sides out. And you can press this if you want. I tend to not just because again I hate pressing. Now the next thing you're going to need is this which is fishing line or you can do a string, you can do dental floss. What I find though with dental floss and string is sometimes if you happen to catch it with the needle it will separate in between and then you'll have a problem. So what we're basically going to do, and this is a quick lesson on gathering, we are going to stitch over this with a zigzag and then we're going to gather it which makes it much easier than some of the other old-fashioned way of doing it. So the first thing you have to do is if you have your quarter inch foot on or quilting foot you need to take that off because it will break it because you can't zigzag with that foot. So we're putting on our zigzag foot. You always want your threads to be under your foot when you're sewing. You just put that there. Now hopefully you have some guy around that you can just borrow some off of because you don't need a lot. If not, just go buy it. It's not that expensive. And I'm just going to tie a knot in one end so if it does get pulled it's not going to actually pull right out. So kind of a balloon tie knot. So that'll be big enough so if I zigzag over it that's not going to go anywhere. And I'm going to set my machine to zigzag. You'll have to figure out how to do that on your machine. And I want long stitches. I'm just going to make sure it's zigzagging and it's not because it is set for not zigzag. There we go. There we go. Now it's doing what I want it to do. Uh-oh. There we go. That's what happens when you try doing it without any fabric in there. It's all balled up. And... I'm going to put this here and I'm just going to have my I'm going to put this under the foot if possible. Let's see if it will go through there. There we go. 
Now there's a little groove in my foot. Um, if you have one that's an open toe, then that works even nicely because that little piece of fishing line will just fit right into that little groove. And I'm going to run my fabric so it's just right on the edge of the, of the foot here. So it's not quite 3 8 but it's not quite quarter inch either. It's a little bit more. I'm just going to take a couple of stitches here right at the beginning without it moving just so I've got it kind of anchored. And now hanging on to my tails and the filament fishing line I'm going to start sewing. And so you're just going to run this right through the center. You're going to run your fabric right through on the edge of your foot. You're doing big, long zigzags and wide zigzags. You can do a little bit narrower if you need to, but I tend to like mine fairly wide and I don't have to worry about catching it. And I'm actually not even looking at what's happening with my needle in this filament. I'm just paying attention to my edge here to make sure that it's going straight and even. As long as this hand stays the same and it's running right through the center there on that groove, it won't go anywhere. All right, there you have it. The ruffle is sewn. Now, if you needed this to go into a specific space, what you would do is half and quarter your project, half and quarter your ruffle. Now, we already have the half because we've got a seam there. And because it's a fairly small area that it's going into, we don't need to worry about the quarter. So now all you have to do is just pull and it just gathers up like magic. So great. We're going to gather that all up. And we tied it so we don't have to worry about that end coming out, which is a good thing. We tend to forget and start pulling too hard. Now, if we needed this to be a freestanding ruffle, we would have clean finished the edge, but this will actually go into uh, one of our seams, so it's not going to be a problem. Now we're going to work on attaching our ruffle to our bib. So we're going to take one of our bibs, the other one aside, and we're going to find the center of our ruffle. So much easier said than done. There we go, right there in the seam. So we're going to put that right on the center, which we have a fold there, so we know that's the center. And we can just pin that right there. And again, perpendicular. And then I'm just going to Make sure this ruffle is all going the right direction. And I'm going to pin this part right down at the bottom. That's going to go into a seam so it can be fairly straight for at least half an inch. So I'm going to put my pin up a little ways so I don't gather down there. And I'm going to do the same on this other side. So I'm going to make sure that ruffle is all going one direction. Now this is the pulling end, so it will always come undone a bit. 
don't worry about it too much. Again, we're going to put that pin up about half an inch. So we don't want ruffles right down at the bottom. And you just pull and it will all gather up on you. Now you can see I've got more, it's gathered more than what I need. So I'm going to try and straighten these out a little bit. And maybe loosen them up a bit. I'm going to have it so it's lying flat on there. And then we're just going to pin every so often. Now this is a very full ruffle. If you don't want it quite so full, you only do one and a half instead of two full pieces of 45 inch. Up to you. You get to decide on these things. Personalize it. Make it your own. Pattern is free. All I ask is that you acknowledge that it was my pattern. And you just work those ruffles around until they're all nice and flat and even. And now it's looking like I have a lot to get in there. So I'm going to start from the center here and work backwards. I might have loosened off too much. And I like using the long pins. They're often called quilter's pins. Those little guys get lost in the folds. Hard to see. Hard to know where they ended up. Make sure it's right on the very edge of that bib fabric. I like to try and straighten those ruffles out too as much as I can so they look like nice little ruffles. Nice and full. I'm just going to pull this down this way. I'm going to take that pin out because it just looks like we've got more fabric needs to go in there than, than it's ready for. So. The key is for them not to be tucked in underneath or anything, otherwise you'll have kind of a funny pleaty thing happening instead of a nice ruffle. I can see I've got, it's become quite loose here, so I'm just going to pull on this one and that will straighten that all out. Now you can put a piece, piece of interfacing in that if you want. I haven't found that it's been necessary. But if you like yours a little stiffer, then definitely interfacing is the way to go. I would probably put it on the front bib piece, which that's what this ruffle is going on, the front bib piece.
All right, there you have it. I am just going to do a quick stay stitch around it so that it's not going to go anywhere. I can take my pins out then and not have to worry about poking myself when I'm doing the next part of it. So we're going to go back to straight stitch and we're going to stitch just close to the edge. I'm going just at the 3 8 which puts it just inside that uh, fishing line that we did. And then as I'm stitching, I'm just making sure those ruffles are nice and evenly spaced and they're not on top of each other. Okay, so that's all tacked down now. And we can cut this line or we can actually take it out now because we don't need it anymore. So if we just cut that knot there, we should be able to just pull the whole thing out. So the fishing line is out. I left the pins in because it just helps it stay flat. So you can take them out at this point if you want. So now we have ties to go on and we have the second uh, backing piece to go on. So your ties, you want to make sure that it's your open end that you're putting in. And I like the ties to go away from the center. So I, I want this, that didn't make any sense. I want the stitched line to be on the shoulder side. So I'm going to put the stitch line this way. So I want this nice edge to be next to my neck. And then if we can find our marks, so our marks are here and here, right there. So we can take one of our pins and put it there. And then our other one, we're going to take the unfinished edge and we're going to make sure that the stitched edge is going towards the shoulder which would be away from the neck this is the neck edge and we're going to find there's the mark there and there so we're going to just put it there I'll take one of these pins out and use it to hold that in place so now we've got our ties in we're going to place our other piece on top and those tie spots should line up just about the same. And then you can take a couple pins out just to hold this in place. And I should have started at the bottom. Start at the bottom. 
bottom this time here. Ruffles are taking up extra fabric. I have to make sure I stretch it out properly. Because your center should line up with your center. And the fold with the fold. Okay. Now we are going to sew this at 4 eighths or half an inch, which should cover, let's make sure, 4 eighths, yeah, so our zigzag is going to be inside that space, which is just exactly the way we want it. I'm going to back stitch on this one because again we're turning it so there's a lot of stress. Always keep your thumb just underneath and make sure that it's not folding up on you at all. pins out. And there you have it. With our ties coming out on the back side. Awesome. We are ready to do the waistband, but first we have to gather our apron skirt part. So in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to half and quarter this because we need this pretty precise to go onto our waistband. We don't want all our gathers on one side and none on the other. We want it the center to be center. So in order to do that, we just fold it in half and mark it with a pin. And then we're going to fold this again, and this will give our quarters. So I'm just going to mark that with a pin. Just be careful you don't go through and pick up the fabric in underneath. And then if you hold that and open it up this way, and you put another pin just in here and again make sure you're not catching that under fabric so now we have our half and our quarters so we're going to use the fishing line again I'm going to find the end We're going to tie a knot. I like to use fairly heavy fishing line. I mean, it comes in different weights. Um, invisible thread does not work. It is too fine. It will just break right away. And like I said, you can use dental floss, but I find 
every once in a while I'll catch it with my zigzag. So we're going to set this to zigzag again. Wide and long stitches. You can mark this with a pencil or a marking pen or something too. You don't have to use pins. It's just my preference to use pins. We're going to get that in underneath there again. That just makes it so much easier. We're going to run it along the side of our presser foot. We're going to take a couple of stitches, put our foot down, I'm just holding it in place there, and then we're going to go. Okay, so now we have that done and ready to go. We're going to take our waistband, which is this piece here, and we're going to mark about half inch in. So we are not going to stitch that into it. This is going to be for where our ties go. And so from there, we're going to half and quarter. So there's half. So mark that. and then quarter and we're just going to quarter to that half inch piece it's not super exact you know it's not a big deal it's an apron nobody looks that close Okay, so there we have it, half and quarter. So this now has to line up with our halves and quarters here. So we're going to take this half here and line it up with that half. And we're going to take this quarter and line it up with that quarter. You can gather first if you want. I just find I have a hard time finding the pins sometimes, so if I pin it first and then gather, then it's not a problem. And then this one is going to be half inch in on this side. So I'm going to actually pin that as well. I'm hoping you're seeing all this. So quarter here. I'm going to take out all the extra pins. And then at the very end here, half inch in. Take that one up. Okay, so this is the side that we have the knot in. So I'm going to gather from this other side. There we have it. It's all gathered, but it doesn't look very neat and tidy. So now we're going to go, and I usually like to go from center again, and just kind of ease all of these out and kind of make them friendly gathers so they're all kind of even. So you want them even, and you want them not to be tucked, so you want you want them kind of flattened out if possible, and that will give you more of a gather than a tuck. And pin. Anybody who knows me knows I'm an anti-pin person. Hardly ever use them, but 
Gathers are one thing I always use pins for because you want them to stay exactly where you put them. If you don't pin, then they'll just keep balling up in front of your needle as you're sewing. All right, we're ready to sew. So we're actually gonna sew this second one on at the very same time, which I know seems kind of crazy, but that's the way we're gonna do it. Because we can. So we have to put it back to straight stitch. And we're doing at four eighths. Going on to our threads. And then we're going to back stitch just a little. Oops. Put a thread in the wrong place here. There we go. Now the key is to make sure your ruffles are up right on the edge. Nothing's folded anywhere. Now you can put some interfacing in this if you want into your waistband. I just find with the amount of fabric that goes into it, it's not a problem. But if you feel that interfacing would be better, then please feel free to do that. You only need interfacing on the one side. Probably your front side, the one that's attached to the right side of the skirt. I just like to keep pulling these ruffles out flat because they have a tendency to kind of gather up and get crumpled in. You see those ones have fallen down. So I can move them up and pull them flat. ones have got away on me so they're all kind of in one spot so straighten them out now, I'm not taking the pins out just because they're ruffles and it's hard to see where they are at the time when you're sewing but be aware that at the same time you may end up breaking a needle. So. Now 
we can take all our pins out. These little guys are hard to see. Looks like I didn't cut my thread. There we go. There we go. There's all the ruffles and gathers. It's fine. You could spend a lot more time getting them exactly right, but did I mention it's an apron? They're meant to be used. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this sideways a bit and I'm going to take my ties and again I'm going to use the unfinished edge and I want this seam to go down and I'm going to tuck that right in there and we're going to stitch that in there I'm just going to pin it so it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm going to do both sides at the same time. I'm just going to stitch down to where that finishes. So I have these loose ends still. We're going to do the same on the other side. So we're going to take that our unfinished edge, our seam is going down pull that one aside so we don't end up catching it put a pin in to hold it and then we're just going to stitch down to there and this I'm going to do at the 4 eighths. And then we're going to go to the other side. So now we have quite a bulky corner there. So again, I'm going to put my thumb over the stitching and trim it off. And we're going to do the same on the other side. And then we can flip that out. And now we have our ties attached. Oh, just found another pin. Where is that hiding? There we go. That's the worst with ruffles. And for the record, I actually put these ties on upside down. So don't do it that way. Flip them so they're the other way. All right, so now we're gonna half this again. We just need the half this time. We just need the half on this front side because this is going to be the one that lines up with our bodice bib. So now we take this one and we're going to half it as well. And 
And this time we are going to go through both layers because we want those to stay together. Just like that. This is the front because your ties are going to the back. And so we want the fronts to match right like that. I don't care about the quarters on this because this is not getting gathered. It's just going to lay flat. So we're just going to lay it out flat. And I am pinning this also. Because I do like them to be in control. So there we have it. We're going to stitch this at 4 eighths or half an inch. We want all those loose threads to go towards the salvage edge, the, the leftover edge. Hold on to your threads. You have to give it a little push over some of the heavy seams. Just why I like to have the hand on the back and the hand on the front. This kind of gives it even tension. Always check with your under thumb what's happening. Make sure that your fabric's going where it should be going. There isn't any tucks or gathers. Okay. We are just about done. Okay, so now we're going to tuck this all back in again. We're going to pull it all kind of to the side. And we're going to tuck all of this in. Make sure that tie is out of the way. We are going to stitch. I'm just going to put a pin in so things don't get wonky on me. So we are going to stitch from here over to just onto this section here. And then we'll stop. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So when we are done, we will have next to, well, we won't have any hand stitching to do. I'm anti-hand stitching. It can be done with a sewing machine. That's the way it should be done. Now my tie is just not cooperating a bit, so I'm going to tuck that in a little bit more. There we go. Now we're good. And then we're just going to trim this corner as well. Which conveniently takes care of a lot of loose threads. Just gonna little, give a little tug. A little push and a little tug. And there you have it. So now this is finished up to here. Completely done. Stitched together up to there. We'll do the same on the other side. 
And then I'll show you how to finish this last little piece of edge. So there we have just a little bit left that needs to be done. And what I'm going to do is just to make this a little bit firmer and to just finish it off a bit more, I'm going to do some top stitching. I'm actually going to top stitch all along here and then down and across and over and back. And then when we cross top stitch here, it will actually catch that fabric and put it into the seam and it will be all completely done without having to do any hand stitching. Now you can, if you really love hand stitching, stitch that down, but I do not love hand stitching, so I'm not going to. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around the bib and that will also hold that, make it look nice and neat and tidy. and finish that off. Now it's very bulky so it will protest quite a bit on that but that's just fine and that could have been done before you stitched it into the waistband. So I'm actually going to do it from the front so I can see what it's going to look like. I'm going to do that bib part first. And I'm just going to go in so that the inside part here I can see. I'm just going to hold it in place for a couple stitches instead of back stitching. I'm just going to hold it and then I'm going to let it go. I'm just going to line up this edge with the inside edge of that foot. The key is just to make sure you're pulling the back and the front out evenly. Always trim your loose threads, so these ones that we had at the beginning, we're going to find them and trim them also, because when your project's done, you want it done. You don't want to have to go back and look and say, oh my goodness, where did all those loose threads go? Try and find them. Just a pain. Okay, so I'm going to just pin I'm going to pin along here just so I know that I'm going to catch it. So I'm putting this right up to the line and because I'm going to be stitching down lower and I want to stitch from the front side again so I can actually make sure that it looks good. Backside doesn't matter quite so much because nobody looks at it. If you make sure that it's right up to that thread, your stitching line, then you will for sure catch it. Okay, so I'm going to start at an edge and again I'm just going in that 
little bit on my foot lining up there. Hang on to your thread. Then you want to stop before you get to the edge. Alright, and all your loose threads should be cut. There you have it, your Christmas apron. So here you have it, the finished apron. If you like what we've done, hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends about it. If you have questions or aren't quite sure about a particular technique, make sure you put it in the comment section and we'll see what we can do in future videos to answer some of your questions. If there's something specific that you'd like me to make in the future or show you how to do, make sure you put that in the comment section below. I'm going to put the pockets, um, clean finishing, all the little techniques will go in as little clips on a se separate section so that you can go and look at those specific items if there's something in the future that you want to review or have forgotten. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye.